Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your Cardboard Concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is a shiny new shrink-wrapped copy of Doodle Dungeon from Pegasus Spiel, who I do have to thank for sending us a review copy to check out. This is a flip and write dungeon creating game featuring artwork from the amazing John Kovalik, most well known for his artwork from games like Munchkin and the Dork Tower comic. Now, Doodle Dungeon is a board game for two to four players that plays in 45 minutes to an hour, at least according to the box. A little bit of background from the back of the box. A dream come true. You've acquired your own dungeon. Today, you visited it for the first time and found a gigantic cave. Hold on a second. The cave is empty. Where's the dungeon? There are no maze-like walls, no sneaky traps, and above all, no heroes slashing monsters. So you hastily go shopping at the dungeon construction shop, and then you make a quick visit to the local monster tavern to hire some monsters. Now you'll be ready to defend your treasures from any invading heroes. Will you manage to surpass your rivals and be celebrated as the most malicious dungeon master? Alright, sounds cool to me. I'm in. Let's take a look at what you get in the box. So here you have the box for Doodle Dungeon. All I've done since you last saw me a few seconds ago was cut the shrink wrap off. I gotta say, this is a surprisingly large box for a flip and write. I expected something smaller. So we have the awesome artwork of John Kovalik here, and interestingly, the entire box has that linen finish on it, which just feels really nice. So we are going to crack this open for the first time. It's giving me a little bit of difficulty. There we go. So on top, we of course have instructions with, again, more John Kovalik art. A bunch of background here. Oh, a really nice breakdown of the components we're about to see. Supposedly, we even get a pencil and eraser, and I know fan of the show... Red Meeple Ryan will appreciate the fact we get a pencil sharpener. Uh, there are some dice. That's awesome. Every dungeon crawling game needs a set of dice. Uh, we have a game overview, the game setup, the general gameplay, how to build the dungeon, the build rules, and so on. We have examples of the various types of things you are going to build in your dungeon and how they work. Looks like we have some kind of polyomino shape here. I am not going to get into the full details. Just want to go through here. Then we have how we can improve our dungeon. And then there's a whole phase where you're going to draw a path through your dungeon. Then you're going to defend your dungeon. Looks like we're going to have lots of cards involved in this. There's some meeple, possibly for the heroes. Looks, um, I gotta say, rather meaty for a flippin' right. This does not look like a quick light game. It looks like there's quite a bit of meat here. Uh, we are looking at the game end and final scoring ends on page 12. Then we have an example, we have tactical advice, and then how to draw the various monster types. So that's cute. How to draw a goblin, how to draw an orc, how to draw a dragon, and then additional things you can do to fill them out to tell what they are. So that looks interesting enough. Um, there is some game advice as well. And we get the, the John Kovalik. Oh, and I love it. A really nice game summary on the back here, broken up. Dig that. Then we have the Double which are the dungeon building laws. Always appreciate when a game includes a reference sheet. So that's great to see. And on the back, we have the dungeon actions and the hero actions. Cool to see. Then we have why this box is so big. Oh, the pad, pad, wow, of dungeon sheets. This is not small. Like I expect most rolling rights to be like this big. This is nice and big. You've got stuff you're going to check off at the top. This is your official dungeon sheet and a ridiculously thick pad of these. It's going to take you a lot of work to get through all those. Then we have what is mostly air in the rest of the box. Fair enough. We do have D10 dice, 10 sided dice that uh, do have a 10 for the 10 instead of a zero, which is good to see for non-gamers. I'm, I'm perfectly used to having a zero for the 10. And there are four of those. It is a four-player game, so one for each player. We have pencils, four already pre-sharpened. As mentioned earlier, pencil sharpener, and not just like a little piece, like a pencil sharpener that actually has a spot for the, 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 the shavings to go. 
Nice touch. We have some meeple. Again, there are four. I have no idea what the sim what they are supposed to be. I'm gonna have to look up what that's supposed to be. It, it is. I'm gonna guess a hero with a helmet. That kind of is. It's it's meeple looking with a big helmet. So it's like a meeple with a pointy hat. Is what I think that is. I will point out my usual pro tip: if you live anywhere with humidity, do not throw out the silica gel pack. Keep that. Uh, there is a very small eraser. Um, my one question about the very small eraser is if you're playing four players, I guess you have to share it. Oh, and this is nice. So in the instructions, there was a, a whole how to draw. Well, you actually get, I'm going to open this up, stencils. Let's see if I can get this out. I'm assuming there are four of them. Yes. Stencils. That's a nice touch. I have not, I, I don't play a lot of roll or flip and rights myself, but the fact that you don't have to be good at drawing because you can just trace. Uh, we have dungeon walls here. We know that's a goblin. That's an orc. That's, I forget what the other monster type is. And spiky pit traps. So that's a nice touch. That is awesome. So you don't have to be good at drawing, though they do tell you how to do it in the book. We have a score pad, which I would assume has about as many sheets as the other thing. And some surprisingly large cards. I mean, I, I have a pretty standard sized hand, I think. Those are bigger than playing cards. We have a, they're, they're, but they're not tarot sized. I gotta say, as an aging gamer with eyes that are slowly giving out on me, I appreciate the size of the text on these. Alright, we're gonna slide this off to the side here. And we are gonna take a look. Are they all the same back? Yeah, all the same back. Fair enough. So we have a bunch of healing potions. We have talismans. We have a curse. The, the curse. Oh, poop. We have a curse. We have a bunch of curses. Oh, I am going to back up. Well, I'll do it on this next one. We have aim boost. So one thing I just noticed here is not only do you have like an item at the top, you have how to draw. So you have what you're drawing. Your three walls, you're drawing two goblins and a troll. Whereas the next one's different. You have two goblins, two orcs, and you get to mark off two checks. And then we look at the next one. It's a trap, and you get to mark off four checks, and so on. So there are multiple copies of each of these items. Looks like four of each, so four leaps. Yep, four goblin daggers, four shields, and so on. Four orc clubs. But each of these has a different pattern at the bottom for your flipping writing. Flipping and writing? Flip writing? Uh, poison weapons. Axe. Bomb. Energy drink, cursed blade, and useful stuff. Because, you know, useful stuff. I must admit, knowing John's work, I am slightly disappointed there's no duck. For fans of Dork Tower, you know exactly what I mean. So you go, fairly thick deck. You have multiple cards there, four different copies of each, each showing different things to draw at the bottom. That's it. Very large box. Though I get it, I, they probably didn't want to fold the boards. So we have a significant stack of cards. We have some meeples, dice, pencils. Uh, drawing a blank on what to call these. Templates, that's not the word. Stencils, that's the word I was looking for. Stencils, score pad, eraser, or sorry, sharpener, eraser, and... Again, massive stack. All the weight of this is this stack right here. This pad weighs so much. So I'll sit right on top with our instructions and the summary. The 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 do bowl, the rule dungeon building rules. Do bowl. And the lid. There you have Doodle Dungeon, Pegasus Feel. Illustrations by John Kovalik, game design by Ulrich Bloom. So there you have what you get inside the box for Doodle Dungeon. A dungeon creating, dungeon crafting, dungeon making, flip and write game for up to four players. No, two to four players. This is not a, uh, I know many roll and writes and flip and writes let you play solo. This one is two player and it is competitive, not cooperative. You're going to flip over your cards. You're going to draw the monsters. It looks like you're going to then try to defend against the heroes. Looks really sweet. I am looking forward to this. I love the aesthetic. I love John's art. Seeing John's art in this game makes me happy. 
surprisingly large box. But that's because the sheet you're drawing on is significantly large. It is not your typical little roll night where you're drawing little tiny symbols. You've got a pretty big grid to draw your dungeon on. So thus the size also comes with everything you need to play right out of the box, including pencils, an eraser, and a pencil sharpener, which is appreciated by us. So that's what you get inside the box for Doodle Dungeon. Now to hear my thoughts on this game, once I actually get it to the table and start playing it with my friends, all you got to do is follow me on social media, where I can be found as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Twitter, Facebook, MeWe, pretty much everywhere online, you can find me. And you can follow my follow me to hear my thoughts on the various games we've been playing. For a full review, you'll have to give it a few weeks, but you can find that at tabletopbellhop.com, our blog, and on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on the podcatcher of your choice, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and so on. Now, if you dig the content you're seeing here and on our blog and website and YouTube channel and Instagram videos, it would be awesome if you headed over to patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and considered tipping your bellhop. That's it for me right now. I got some instructions to read so I can learn how to play Doodle Dungeon. So good night and game on. <laughs>